Understanding coaxial virtual four bar lifts gives you a distinct advantage in robot design. Allowing you more compact and efficient mechanisms. But many builders don't fully grasp how they work or when to use them over standard four bars or virtual four bars. Getting this right means you can significantly improve your robot's performance and build more sophisticated systems. I'm Brogan Pratt, and with over 10 years of experience teaching robotics and design, I've helped countless students master these crucial concepts. In this video, I'm going to show you on a robot how coaxial virtual four bars work, explain the times where you'd want to use one, and clearly demonstrate their differences from standard setups. We'll also cover the two main ways to build a coaxial lift. And I've got a robot here to demonstrate all these mechanics live so you can see exactly how it all comes together. Now, in order to understand how a coaxial four bar lift works or a, a coaxial virtual four bar lift, it really helps if we understand how a virtual four bar lift works. Now, the purpose of a four bar, if we know what a four bar linkage is, you have one bar, two bar, three bar, and four bars effectively. And these two bars here stay parallel. And these two bars here stay parallel so that as you lift up your arm, your main support beam and your end effector end up staying the same angle. Now, the real benefit of a coaxial virtual four bar is it allows you to rotate the end effector as you are lifting it up and down. Because it may be beneficial on a standard virtual four bar or four bar to lift your arm all the way up and keep your position at 90 degrees all the way up and keep it parallel to the ground all the way up as you go. However, there may come a position where you want to be able to get yourself higher. And if your end effector is designed such a way that it hits into any sort of support you have, you may not want this arm to be exhausted at this point. You may want the ability to rotate your module around so as you come around to the back, you can exhaust it to the other half of your robot. By doing that, it allows you to effectively grab a piece in this position, lift it all the way up in the arm, rotate the arm around as you come up, and then place it out on the other half of your robot. That may be beneficial all the time, it may not be. It just depends on what your specific setup and needs are. Coming down to the actual nitty degree of that virtual four bar, typically what you have is if this is your main axle, you've got this as a dead axle. So it's hard attached to your main beam here. So this does not move as a dead axle. Then you have your main lift arm and that lift arm is physically attached to some sort of gear. And this lift arm is free to rotate around this dead axle. So as you can see, as it rotates around, this pulley doesn't rotate, but this lift arm does rotate. And on the other end, this pulley free rotates with the arm around the arm itself. So you have a fixed pulley, movable arm, fixed arm, movable pulley. And because of that counter rotation, it allows you to get that opposite rotation effect. Now, a coaxial four bar or a coaxial virtual four bar shares a function of this axle. Now there are two ways of setting up a coaxial lift so that it serves two functions. What you need to find a way to do is you need to find a way to rotate these pulleys on the inside. So if you can rotate both of these pulleys, it allows you to take that end effector. And as you rotate those pulleys, now you can rotate your end effector. Let me show you that. So if I get a better view here, as I rotate these pulleys, the end effector changes. As I rotate the pulleys, the end effector rotates back. Now there are two ways of making a coaxial virtual four bar. The first way is to grab one motor, have a dead axle, and have your motor directly drive this pulley here. That's the preferred method, okay? My setup right now is not ideal. Uh, the reason my setup is not ideal right now is because I just retrofitted 
a, another virtual four bar to have the setup. So right now I actually have a live axle. So on my setup, I have a motor here that's driving this gear that is connected to my main axle here. So that as the axle itself rotates, the pulleys themselves rotate. It is far better to have a motor on the inside here, or even two motors, that rotates the pulley itself and have the pulley free floating and free rotating just like we have the arm free rotating on top of the axle. That is a far better setup. Now, what are the problems with this current setup of using a live axle to be able to rotate that end effector? Well, one of the issues is you need a heck of a lot more bearings to be able to get this up. Right now, I've got a bearing system running on this side and another one on this side so the entire axle itself is live, as well as you need to constrain that axle and power that axle from another section over here. I could direct drive directly onto that axle, but I still need to find a way to constrain that axle so that the whole system can't slide back and forth. The biggest reason perhaps that this is an issue though is that axle stress. So this main axle itself is transporting torque both for the wrist itself and it's acting as a pivot point for that heavily loaded arm, if it is. So this axle needs to be brutally strong to be able to have that. Another issue is any sort of backlash that happens in this gear is going to end up getting propagated to my main lift arm as well. And then another big issue is that in order to rotate this arm up and around, as this arm is rotating, this axle needs to fight against that rotation that has these main arms. So it's actually making these motors here lift, basically do double duty. So it's not as preferred. Instead, you should use a dead axle, have a motor attached, and maybe use some sort of gear system on here, attach a gear onto this axle here, and then uh, mount this onto, say, even this axle, or lower to the arm itself so that you get less, uh, less center of mass at the end of a really heavy arm system. Now, a big one of this is that you've got load isolation, yeah? So your loads from that lame lift arm are now being handled by these main lift arms, and the loads for the pulley are now being handled here, as opposed to these main lift arms having to fight some of these motor systems as well. On the same vein, you're not going to have as much inertia as you're going to fight over, and that you don't have to fight over another rotating axle while another one is rotating on top. And overall, that design's a lot more robust because you can have a much stronger uh, frame on that axle. You don't get any backlash running through here. You don't have to have more constraints with another uh, ball bearings moving through. Now, one of the big drawbacks of doing it this way is that you do need to find a way of attaching another motor or two onto the actual virtual four bar itself. And that can be a bit more challenging depending on what your space constraints are. So you can use this setup one in a live axle. But keep in mind, you're going to have to keep track of some of those forces, and you may not want to use this on something that's going to be a little bit heavier or having to move at really, really quick speeds. So let's get this powered up and see what it looks like when we're actually providing power to our system. I've got a uh, typical game piece here. We'll go ahead and grab our claw with that. Now with our virtual four bar, if we don't use the uh, coaxial section here, we can just go ahead and lift it up, and you notice that the piece stays parallel to the floor in the exact position at which you picked it up. But we are capable of rotating that main axle that this four bar is sitting on top of. And by doing that, we can rotate just the pulleys and not these large gears here. And we can just rotate the head of this angle. And typically, if we were to run this, we would get stopped about here because our arm would hit this plate. But if we rotate our arm around, we can actually get all the way back to the end of our system before we're coming back. And you could even get more range off of this. I just don't have as much range on here right now because I'm using such an intense gear ratio just with how my system lined up. So quick recap, coaxial virtual four bar lift. You start with the building blocks of a basic standard virtual four bar where you have again preferably a dead axle with a live lifting arm i've got a couple motors here to allow that end effector to stay parallel to the ground as we lift that end point up and down 
Then that coaxial movement, again, I've got that live axle here, but you should be using a dead axle and rotating this pulley itself. So I hope you found that a useful demonstration of how exactly a coaxial or shared axle uh, four bar, virtual four bar lift works. And best of luck with designing these one year robots. If you found this helpful, please consider giving the video a like and consider subscribing for more robotics content and tutorials. Hope you enjoyed it and best of luck on your next robotics project.